everybody. I'm Larry O'Brien, uh, VP of Research at ARC. This is our session on uh, the operator of the future. Um, or you could also call it making operators, you know, better than they are today. Um, if you saw this morning, we were talking about uh, cognitive computing. And to me, uh, if you've researched this topic, this is all about cognitive neuroscience. I think when you get to the root of it, um, it's really has a lot to do with the way that humans uh, view and process and deal with information. Um, and I got a few introductory slides. We have very good presenters today. I don't want to take too much time away from them. And hopefully this thing works. Um, so what's at the root of all this and why are we talking about this today? There's a bunch of reasons. Um, I think one of the big reasons is the workforce challenge. Um, there is a shortage of qualified labor in the process industries today. Um, this issue hasn't gone away. Uh, you know, if we, if we go back a few years, uh, you probably remember if you've been coming to the forum for several years, we used to talk about the workforce crisis issue quite a lot. But I think now that the market is kind of in a downturn, we tend to talk less about it. Um, that doesn't mean the problem isn't still there, right? Uh, it's still very much a big problem. We don't have enough qualified labor. Uh, we don't have, uh, or we're losing a lot of our experienced labor in this workforce. Um, I think if you look at operators, uh, they're under a lot more strain than they ever have been. Uh, they're more challenged than ever. I don't think we've felt the full brunt of this issue yet. Um, we still have a long way to go before we really feel the pain of what's happening. Uh, as far as the labor issue. Uh, and this is also driving growth in a lot of other areas like remote operations, uh, predictive maintenance, uh, cloud computing, uh, concurrent engineering practices, engineering in the cloud, whatever you want to call it. A lot of these new technologies uh, actually come from this root issue of uh, the lack of qualified labor. Um, but specifically, we're talking about operators today. Um, and uh, to ARC, and what you'll see in these presentations today is that operators face, uh, I think, three primary challenges today. Uh, bad information is one of them. Um, and that means uh, bad information is presented to them or information is presented poorly, uh, maybe not in the most optimum fashion. Uh, we have a lot of very poor legacy HMI graphics design out there. I mean, I'm sure if you've been in uh, you know, many of these modern uh, day control rooms that we have today, you've seen plenty of, of HMI displays that don't look so hot. You know, the, uh, the full color palette of magenta and fuchsia, you know, displays and everything on the black background and so forth. Uh, not really the best way to display information and it's not the best way for human brains to process information. I think the other problem we have is too much information, right? The, a lot of times today operators are presented with way too much information. Uh, it's information overload, very hard for them to sift critical information from non-critical information. Uh, some of the things that are happening in the marketplace today are compounding this problem. So we have the drive towards remote operations centers uh, where you have operators that are processing information from multiple sites or multiple plants and that's making it an even harder issue. Um, alarm management's another issue, but we're not talking about that here today. But you have the issue of alarm management, alarm flooding and so forth. Um, the other big thing we're going to hear about today is control room uh, environments. Um, and those generally are subpar too. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people here in the audience have been in some pretty uh, nasty looking control rooms, right? Uh, uh, maybe some stuff that's been cobbled together, you know, over the past 20 years of various, uh, you know, types of uh, used office furniture and, and spider plants and, you know, all kinds of weird stuff, uh, you know, in the control room and, and, you know, outdated display technology and so forth. So that's a big issue too. And we're gonna go over all that today. Um, so here's an issue of, uh, you know, old school uh, displays in HMI, you know, which I think is very representative of, uh, you know, of the state of things today. Um, you know, we're, we're mimicking, you know, the old school face plates and, and so forth. Uh, and there really isn't a lot of sophisticated science, you know, be, behind uh, how information that you see here is, is presented. Uh, it's very hard to distinguish between the critical information and the non-critical information here, don't you think? I mean, for me, it would be very hard. Uh, you know, to pick something very critical out of here. Um, you know, the problem is, and we'll, we'll talk about this too, is that many of these operators get used to these displays uh, and it gets very hard for them to transition to new displays. Here's the remote operations challenge. Uh, so we do see this drive towards these big remote operations centers that are taking information from multiple 
uh, multiple plants and multiple facilities and so forth. Um, and this is a more modern uh, control room that we see here, um, but, but it's becoming very difficult to, to process all this information. Um, and control room design. Uh, actually, if you go back to the old days, and there's an old panel view on the left, uh, it was probably easier you know, for operators to take a look at that old panel view and actually get some idea as to how the entire plant was doing. You know, when they had those old panel views. Uh, but then in the 90s, we had this transition, you know, to multiple uh, HMI displays, and you can see them stacked, you know, three high. Um, probably not a very, you know, ergonomically friendly design that you see there on top of some sort of outdated, you know, uh, HMI design. Um, so we've got a lot of issues here. Um, fortunately, uh, we have some great presenters. Uh, that are going to tackle these issues right here. So we have uh, Jeremy Wells of Northwest Natural Gas. We have uh, uh, Michael uh, Teisling of Dow Oyster Creek and Morris Wilkins, uh, uh, who's with the ISA 101 committee, uh, will all be presenting here today. Uh, and if you could pull up that main slide set, our, our first presenter is going to be Michael uh, Teisling of uh, Dow Chemical. And he's going to talk to us about uh, some advancements in control room design. And they've done some very interesting things. So please. Uh, Let's all give a hand to Michael. <laughs> 